Good morning and thanks for joining me. I'm having a big think today about what to do. It was my intention to carry on cruising but it's a very grey day, very grey indeed. Some rain is forecast although that has changed. It's going to come a little bit later in the day. I am pondering whether to have a layover day. I do that occasionally when the weather doesn't look good. I've got plenty to do on the boat. <laughs> I've just been looking at my uh, my map book. This is uh, the waterways guide number three. I'm moored just beyond bridge 68, which was a, a footbridge and I've got quite a good mooring here. I'm tucked away. Um, there is one boat behind me but we're separated by reeds. And I've studied the, the map. I've been studying the Google Maps as well. I've got the impression there aren't many good mooring places between here <laughs> and my sort of final destination which is Kilby Bridge. So between here and Kilby Bridge there are 11 locks and Saddington Tunnel and I was thinking of doing it in two days doing five locks today and getting up towards Newton Harcourt and then doing the six locks tomorrow but I'm now sort of thinking I'll have a longer day tomorrow and maybe do all of it <laughs> My main concern is, is the mooring. Since I came up from Foxton Locks, very, very few places to moor, and I was lucky to get this one where I am. So that's my, my concern, if you like. <laughs> I've got plenty to do on the boat, editing and other things, and I'm tempted to lay over. I don't think the weather is going to brighten up today. And I'm not rushed at all, as I've said before. So I think that's what I'm, I'm going to do. And I'll review the situation tomorrow. Tomorrow is definitely looking a brighter day. We don't have the grey clouds that we have. At the moment, the forecast is showing... I don't know if you can see that. It's all grey clouds for today. Whereas tomorrow, the clouds are white. <laughs> so... And there's some sun during the afternoon. And as it changes daily, come tomorrow, the weather might be even better. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. So I'll say cheerio for now and catch up with you later. I didn't mention earlier that I'm not aware of any boat movements today at all. It's only about 10 o'clock in the morning, but very often by this time there's been quite a few boats. Obviously it's going to be difficult if boats are coming down through Foxton Locks because the locks don't open until 10. So possibly from 11.30 thereabouts onwards some boats will, <laughs> will pass me. But I'm outside as you can obviously tell and it is raining. Not much. It's not shown on the forecast to rain at this point in time. But it is so miserable. Really, really miserable. Let me swing you around and show you. Well, that change in the weather was sudden and very unexpected. <laughs> I got quite wet out there. Well, that was a bit of a surprise getting caught out like that. <laughs> it's not on the forecast. Originally, there was to be some rain about this time, but then the forecast changed. We had quite a heavy downpour seems to have stopped again now. <laughs> C'est la vie. <laughs> Did you know I could speak French? <laughs> I 
the weather has suddenly brightened up quite unexpectedly it's still shown on the weather app as dull <laughs> I'm in a bit of a quandary now as to what to do it's a glorious day absolutely ideal for cruising but now I've sort of set my mind to doing some work in the boat so I think I will carry on with that and stick to my revised plan and carry on cruising tomorrow <laughs> I just hope I don't regret it it's early afternoon and it's raining again which I hope justifies my decision to stay put there's no rain shown on the weather app that I use the Met Office one I can't understand how it can be so wrong I suppose but uh, it's often the way isn't it Good morning and thanks for joining me. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. I've got a busy day ahead of me. It's Saturday and I'm planning to go through a tunnel, Saddington Tunnel, and possibly 12 locks. <laughs> Once I've gone through the tunnel, there's a group of five locks, then some cruising, then another group of seven locks. It's a dry day, the sun is trying to come out, which is very promising, I'm pleased about that. It's a little bit of wind, but it's quite pleasant at the moment. It's just before 10 o'clock. I've put on a very colourful shirt. <laughs> this used to be one of my favourite shirts, but unfortunately, when I had the solar panels installed last year, it got snagged on the back, so there's a bit of a hole in it. <laughs> so uh, I haven't been wearing it. But going through the locks, if I've got to climb into and out of locks, I th you can get messy. So I thought, well, I'll put an old shirt on, but one that looks presentable. So that's what I've done. I've also got some very old <laughs> shorts on as well, <laughs> which are beginning to go to shreds. <laughs> but uh, that's just to keep me clean or keep my better clothes clean, really. <laughs> so I'll be underway very shortly. I'm heading to Kilby Bridge. It's only sort of about five miles away, I think, from where I am. I haven't actually checked. <laughs> I keep looking at the map, but I haven't worked it out. But uh, that is the plan for today. And it's good to have you along with me. Using my Nicholson's Waterways Guide number three, I'm going to explain the extent of today's journey. Having laid over for a day just beyond Bridge 68, I carry on. I come up through here, I cross Smeaton Aqueduct, travel along a little bit further and go into Saddington Tunnel. I come out of the tunnel, continue my journey up to Kibworth Toplock and that is the extent of today's cruise. I'm just setting off again. It's, it's fairly warm actually, which is pleasing. Just steering my way around the reeds ahead of me. Don't think there are any boats behind me. Just look back, make sure I've not forgotten anything. And I'm underway again. <laughs> it is certainly quite narrow. The encroachment on both sides has reduced the width quite considerably. So two boats can pass, but it, it will be tight, you know. What I didn't mention earlier is about the locks, and they are double width locks, which means they take longer to fill and longer to empty. About 10 minutes before I set off, a boat did pass me heading towards the tunnel and locks. Whether there'll be an opportunity to catch up with him and share the locks, it 
it would be good to have someone to share with without a doubt. 12 locks by yourself, it's quite daunting. No boats have gone that way towards Foxton. It's gone 10 o'clock now, so Foxton locks will be open and sending boats either up or down. Can't say which. So it could be a while before any other boats come up behind me. There could be a few boats between me and Foxton that are going to set off, but um, generally I would think in terms of them coming down from the locks. Just passing an old boat, it's got that sort of historic look about it. I like the gazebo canopy. First bridge of the day is ahead of me now. This is bridge 69, Gumley Bridge. There's a fisherman ahead of me. Thank you. Quite a twisty canal, this one. I've just passed under Long Hill Bridge, number 70. I think it's difficult to capture on film just how windy it is. I look ahead and it looks totally undisturbed, as though nothing has been through here. I'm meant to be noting mooring spots on my map. I've got the map book here and I've got my pen at the ready. <laughs> and I've just passed there and I've forgotten to note it. So that was... I've just got to try and work out where that was. There's a rhyme down here somewhere. <laughs> it's on the book now. There's some armco on the left side here, the off side, which is no good to me. Looks as though it would be a nice mooring position though. I was just filming with the GoPro, the GoPro 7, and I noticed as I turned it off that the image was upside down. This is the sort of thing that happens to me. It'll be interesting to see if it did record. <laughs> and whether it is upside down. And around another wide bend here. It is lovely countryside, it really is. Just about to go over Smeaton Aqueduct. On my left here is a spillway. Morning. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Just hope the weather holds today. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I've got a lot of locks to do. I don't know if there's going to be any help or not. <laughs> oh, 
best. Another viewer of the channel. Not watching what I'm doing. Silly me. totally unexpected this wide expanse through here and it looks as though you can tie your boats off using those um, I don't know what you call them <laughs> but those recessed bars I imagine you can tie off to those so that's quite a useful bit of uh, mooring uh, length there and there was me Complaining how narrow the canal is. <laughs> I'm just passing quite a wide winding hole here, which is very good. Yeah, you wouldn't have any trouble turning a long boat here. It's very wide. Something. I'm just passing a moored boat. I'll do a little bit of revving up in a moment to see uh, what's happening. I can actually see the tunnel ahead of me now. There's a bridge before it, and there is a boat shortly to enter the tunnel. So there's a good prospect to double up with to go through the locks. Well, that boat is in now. Saddington Tunnel is 880 yards long and a few less meters. <laughs> I don't know if I'm imagining it, but I think I can see right through the tunnel from here. I'll find out when I get there. This is Smeaton Road Bridge, built in 1917. I can actually see right through the tunnel. Went slightly awry there as I was filming. <laughs> I've got a good view right through the tunnel. I'm going to switch my Roof lamp on. There are no boats coming towards me, just the boat in the tunnel. And there is a boat behind me now. So the front of the boat is just going in the tunnel now. And I'll be joining it very shortly. This tunnel has got nine, oh, 1814 to 1918 on it. I've got my headlamp on, but at the moment we wouldn't know. Oh, I can just about see it. It is far more pleasant, I have to say, to come into a tunnel where you can see the exit. And the weather looks good the other side, I have to say. I'm going to shut this down now, catch up with you very shortly. The boat behind hasn't yet entered the tunnel. The boat ahead of me has left the tunnel. just reached the halfway point 
which is good. Hasn't taken too long. I can see the boat ahead of me clearly in the distance. The canal is quite straight as you come out of the tunnel. It's not very drippy in here, I have to say. It's a pretty dry tunnel. One of the driest, I should think, I've been through. I think the boat behind will soon be coming into the tunnel now. Well, I'm very close to the end of the tunnel now. Probably 30 metres or so. So I'll soon be popping out. see the light of the boat behind me. I'm glad to say it's not raining on the other side. <laughs> Pretty much the same weather I think as when I came in. A few spots of water on the roof on the solar panels, but not a great deal, I'm glad to say. So, there we have it. Saddington Tunnel. I've just turned my lamps off. This one as well. Let's see when the first lock is coming. It's probably less than a mile to the, the first lock. There are two bridges beforehand. And I'll be coming up to, uh, well the first lock is called Kibworth Top Lock. And that's number 18. The locks at Foxton number 8 to 17. So the next lock along the system is 18. All makes good sense. It looks like the boat I've been following is just moored up. Yeah, that's definitely the boat all right. Just moored up before the bridge. Hello, you all right? Are you? Yeah, it's Get it? Oh, cranky. Get to slow down, cool no, down. No, there's no water coming out, it's water cold. So oh, right. Like it's one of those raw ones, ones, is it? Takes the water from the canal. Yeah. And, oh, does that mean it's a pump problem or something? Probably, yeah. Oh, cranky. I'm sorry to hear that. No, no, no. Hope you get it sorted. Yeah. Are you with River Canal Rescue? Yes. <laughs> I, I used them once, but uh, yeah. Very helpful. There's a mooring spot just the other side of the bridge. So I'm on only one though. So this is Fleckney Bridge we're going under. I don't know if you heard that clearly, but um, that boat has been overheating. It's a, a water cooled one, it takes the water in from the canal circulates it and spews it out again but uh, it's not doing what it should be doing. I don't really know too much about that system I have to uh, confess I just know of it so I can't really say any more than that. This armco on my left is sort of long enough for one and a half boats <laughs> depending on the length. You would get two boats in I think just about my length. last I've found some good mooring on the left here. Certainly three boats, maybe four. Look at that, <laughs> lovely. I've already noted on my map book that it's here, but I'll just put the figure four by it as well. So I'm just coming up to the next bridge, we 
which is the Ross Bridge, bridge number 74, and then beyond that is the first lock, Kibworth top lock. I think I would have expected to see the boat behind me it's not in view anyway I'll, I'll get to the lock and I'll crack on and prepare it and enter it and just wait a minute to see if the boat does join me who knows some more mooring along here that's good I'm fairly close to the lock now I can see a house canal side not your typical canal cottage <laughs> but I think it's an old building anyway brick and slate I can see the lock landing so I'll soon be moored up then I'll check to see whether the lock is set in my favour or not if it isn't I'll have to fill it no boats have come my way so it's difficult to know. I think it's empty. Yeah, I think it's empty. I'm going to get ready to jump off now. Many thanks for watching. In the next episode, I'll pass down through the locks and it proves to be a very troublesome day. Look after yourselves, your friends and families and if you haven't yet done so, please do think about subscribing and click the little bell to receive notifications of future videos. Until next time, take the utmost care Bye for now.